This is Father Sebastian, Master Fangsmith of the Sabretooth Clan and impresario of the Endless Night Vampire Ball. And you're listening to Hollywood Arcane, vampire culture, music, and magic with your special guest host, Johanna Moresco of the Crew Shadow. Greetings, vampires. My name is Father Sebastian, impresario of the Endless Night Vampire Ball and Master Fangsmith of the Sabretooth Clan. And I bid you welcome to my new podcast, Hollywood Arcane, Vampires, Music, Magic, and the Paranormal, with my co-host, Johanna Moresco, the violinist of the Crew Shadows. Well, hello, everyone, and hello, Sebastian. How are you today? I am good, and I I, I caught you on holiday. You were... You did. A, uh, a rare occurrence for me. And you look like you're in a muggle's house. I am. I am. But it's very comfortable, and yeah. My mom's house is very mugglish, but it is super comfortable, and it is yes. very organized. So I, I go there, and I'm like, I can't podcast from here. I can't podcast from here. Please don't podcast from here. So yeah. what's going on in Johanna's world? Well, I just had an especially epic Tampa vampire ball. Oh, yeah, you were there. Yes, and I heard that the performances were extremely vampiric. Indeed. Yes. No, they uh, they were pretty awesome. Pretty, pretty awesome. We had the burlesque dancer, Zaria Janelle, for the first time, and she killed it. She was amazing. Friday night and Saturday night, she was two completely different people. She's a shapeshifter. I don't know how she does it. <laughs> I was like... On Friday night, she looked very Victorian, you know, Br Bride of Dracula. And Saturday, she yes. looked like um, something out of like a world. glamorous Nosferatu. <laughs> yeah, like a sexy Nosferatu with like yeah, like it, it was it blew my mind. Yeah, yeah. No, our had... uh, the talent that we had on stage this year was just amazing. I loved every second of it. And uh, Jasmine Rose did a performance downstairs um, in the VIB that was basically a recreation of Lilith to an Incubus song. And it was yes. really good. And then Paris did, um, Paris did a uh, cover of a Queen of the Dam song dressed as Lestat. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I, I still feel high from it. I had the best time and it just has me itching for new orleans to to get here i i don't want until october well we do have the salem vampire ball in september now that i think of it that's going to be amazing too. yes we do and they're doing a theme for the first year it's called cirque the vampire um i'm really mm -hmm. curious to see what happens with ben and lex we should have them on the podcast again i think that would be good we should they are you know they're so creative Yes, and they're they're very detail oriented. They are. So I'm I'm just I'm just uh, I've I've got some new beard cream and I'm just, um because I go to this new place called sponsored by Hammer and Nails, uh, men's salons. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, Listen, I, I'll take the sponsorship deals I can get. <laughs> yeah, they put this new beard cream in, and I'm just like like in love with it. I'm like, <sighs> your beard does look nice. Yeah, and they trim it every month. I got yeah. a membership to the Hammer and Nails Club. So nice. they're really, really cool. But yeah, I'm, I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Um, yeah, we had a rockin' Tampa vampire ball. We had a pirate ship. Oh, shit. I, that was like, <laughs> oh, man. That was awesome. Um, I loved it. Yeah, that was great. You should check out the Endless Night Instagram for pictures of that because that was probably the highlight of the weekend. Yeah. Did you see the dolphins and the manatees swimming by? I did, yeah. That was great. And uh, the next Tampa Vampire Ball is gonna be in the spring, late spring, and we'll be announcing it soon as we confirm everything with the castle. Um, but we're gonna up our game every year. And I think that this year mm -hmm. we'll game up from last year and uh, we'll move to the next year and up at another level so yeah. what's and, up with you what's going on with you well i just got back from wave gothic treffen in leipzig 
uh, Germany, and I met a wonderful bunch of new vampires in the Sabretooth clan that came on board. We have um, some really big personalities, and I was in a new market with uh, that was more in the center because Ooh. it was easier for me to get to. And what was really cool is, is that it was, uh, there were some Ukrainians next to me, these Ukrainian women that ran a, a booth for BDSM floggers and stuff like that. And a couple of the women that were in the booth were in our active soldiers in the Ukrainian army. Okay. Wow. And they're in the trenches making floggers to come sell at Wave Gothic Treffen. And I was like, whoa. And they were like, yeah, we're going back to the front line on Tuesday. So they're back at, they're, they took a break from war, okay, to come sell BDSM floggers at a fetish party. Uh, Women are amazing. It, well, here's the thing. The men are not allowed to leave Ukraine. Women can. Mm. So these okay. women, so these lady soldiers were like, and I asked them, I mean, are you like angry with the Russians? And they were like, no, we're not because they're being forced to do what they're doing. And I, I, I just couldn't imagine being a young Russian kid drafted to go fight in that war. It would just be horrible. But the, the Russian men are fighting. There's no Russian women fighting, but there's a lot of Ukrainian women that are active in combat. And that was, that was just like, every time I would walk by, I clap. Yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully those few days were a little bit of a fun time for those ladies. They had the best spirit and the most amazing attitudes. I um, mean, they Good. were wonderful ladies. And they were really cool. And they, one of them, got, I think one or two of them got fangs. So we got two saber tooths in the trenches and, and, uh, <laughs> we're everywhere. And, uh, they're going to, they're going to wear their fangs in the battle. Wow. I thought that was pretty interesting. So also, um, there was a new market in, in Leipzig called the dark affair. And okay. it was really cool. It was really well organized, but it was for me, it was better because it was closer to the center. So I didn't have to travel mm -hmm. all the way to Agra every day. Um, yeah. And uh, they had performance. Danny, D Danny Devine performed and yeah. it was really cool. She did her blood show and it okay. was outside and there was kids watching and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> and, and I yeah, go the German the kids are used to stuff like that. Yeah. That's they but really still, are. They really are. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I they, it doesn't phase them at all. A little boob doesn't bother them. <laughs> so it was great. It was it was really cool. We had a, a vampire picnic. Um, we went to the Obsession Bazaar, which is the big fetish party at the Volks Palace, and that oh, was really fun. So pretty. I got, but I bumped into so many people I haven't seen in years. I and, am jealous. Well, maybe they can book Cruise Shadows next year. Yeah. I was, at the time, um, a guest at Enchantment Con, which okay. is a convention in St. Augustine, and it was really, really cool. Some of our friends were there. Rogue was also a guest, Rogue from Cruise Shadows, yeah. and he DJed. Uh, Jason Charles Miller was there doing his thing. He did a charity D&D &D game. It was, a, it was a ton of fun, but I was... I was definitely thinking of you guys at uh, Traffin. I, I I was so sad for you not to be there. Everybody was asking where you were, Aww. and uh, Danny Danny did a Danny did a little. Uh, she did a, a good job, um, good. but the uh, picnic for me was the highlight of the weekend. We had a vampire picnic, and we had delivery of pizza in the middle of the night um, <laughs> from a pizza guy. But there was about thirty people there. And it was just so wonderful to have people that I made thanks for 20 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago. And that, that day all together, just celebrating their fangness. And yeah. it was really cool. And I'm really happy. And uh, so we'll, uh, we'll definitely get you to come next year to wave. Back sure. at oh, I got to go to the Victorian picnic for five minutes. First time ever. Someone's working making things. I was going to say, I'm always too busy to get to go. Well, we should stop by next year because what the Victorian picnic was 
wild. It was like yeah. 12 to 15,000 people in Victorian costumes, just like as far as you could see through the trees, there was Victorian people. And I made the silly mistake of going with Danny. Do you know why that was a mistake? Because you would walk half a step, get stopped for photos, walk half a step, get stopped for photos. Yeah, the photographers, yeah. the photographers are merciless. Okay. I mean, she's stunning. Well, kind that's of the perfect true. combination. But it, I, I know, but like we tried to get in there. <laughs> and I'm going to, I'm going to get her, I'm going to put her in a, uh, um, a, a cloak next year. And yeah. Have to walk in and she'll be with the big hooded cloak. And right. We'll right. Sneak her in. Should we have but some, speak- um, like, some, like, no photos, please? <laughs> uh, that won't help. That won't help. Yes. Uh, well, what a great time. Today, That's awesome. But today, let's talk about our guest. We have a special guest, another impresario. Very excited There's- for this guest. She is, she hails from Sacramento, California. She has mm-hmm. her own vampire ball. She has a jewelry line. She's a musician and she's just a heck of a cool woman. And that woman is Shannon McCabe. There she is. <laughs> That's an entrance. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, My- Shannon. For my birthday and it's uh he gets the best husband award oh oh that's cool <laughs> oh, wow Fantastic. so shannon oh, how well. are you doing i'm doing so good i'm up here in sacramento right now just hanging out with my husband and visiting some friends and uh, i've been spending a lot of time down in your area in orange county lately so it's nice to be back home right now for a little bit all those times at Disney World on mushrooms. <laughs> I didn't go to Disney World with you on mushrooms ever. And yeah, fact, neither of you would ever do that, I'm sure. No. <laughs> we absolutely have fun, though. It is, I mean, who better to go to Disneyland with than the Vampire King, right? Oh, stop it. Vampire Queen. <laughs> So we, we go to Disney probably like once every my, month. My dear brother. And I'd like to make a point of showing you something. This is oh. the well, world's best lipstick. Thank you. It's, it is an iconic color. I love it. I wear it literally every day. Thank you. <laughs> that looks stunning on you. Thank you. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, she's wearing my makeup line. Johanna Marasco Cosmetics, and that looks beautiful. So thank you for sharing that. I really, I love it. I love it. Oh, thank you. Um, all my friends, the little uh, stamps that you have with the bats and the moons, and like, oh. I can't show up with their little, you know, their little decorations, little ta- I, face tattoos. They're so cute. <laughs> thank love you. your line. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I was super excited to get this because. Every time I wear red, I get on my fangs, you know, and mm-hmm. then consider very fang friendly. Yes. <laughs> that was a, a priority for me when creating that lipstick. So. Yeah. <laughs> Killing it. I could it's see you good. testing your fang, mm-hmm. Johanna, in like the bathroom going like 10 different versions of the lipstick. And now, no. It's yeah, important. Yep. Yeah. No, it's absolutely. Important. Yeah, it's important. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like yeah, to say right now. I'd like to say right now, never put your fangs in hydrogen peroxide, or they will turn pink forever. Pink. Pink. I actually had a guy come by, and he had his fangs, and he put them in hydrogen peroxide to clean them, and I couldn't figure out what it was. Like, I yeah. I, they, he brought the fangs by, and they were pink, and then I finally found out it was hydrogen peroxide from the manufacturer of the oh acrylics. God. Okay. So I was like, do not put your fangs in hydrogen peroxide ever. It will only make them pink. I see the logic. Well, here's I the see, thing. I see what he's going for. Yeah, I, I, I took my Dremel tool and I tried to carve, it, carve off the pink because I thought it was just on the upper layer. It goes all the way in. There's no, wow. there's no surviving. So vampires, 
Trust me. Do not put your fangs in hydrogen peroxide ever. <laughs> I'm burning your 3D fangs right now. Oh, cool. Oh, they look so uh -huh. good. And they're like one, one whole set, which I thought was interesting because my other ones that you custom made me are mm -hmm. uh, uh, the separate teeth, which are great and they fit perfectly. But these are awesome because it's just one piece that you can put on. So you can like quick change, you know? Well, I'll say right here and now that what's interesting about the, um, the fangs, the 3D fangs versus the handmade fangs, if you make the fangs on a mold, whether they're 3D or handmade, you're going to have a little bit of shrinkage just slightly, okay, one to 3% on, on a really good mold. So we make them double so they click on better. Yeah, they, they, I mean, these ones are just like, they, they're super comfortable, like, feel like I'm talking fine in them. And so, yeah. Yeah, you sound great. Winning. Good job. I made a, <laughs> I made a whole job. bunch of fangs to Germans this weekend, and they were like really, really happy. And... I fixed a bunch of fangs and Monday I had repair day and everybody came by and got their fangs tuned up and stuff like that. And there was one girl that got her fangs 20 years ago and she still has them. And I tuned them up. Wow. Amazing. Yeah, it was cool. That's really cool. I feel like these have the potential of lasting that because they're, you know, a, a mm -hmm. solid. Piece. So yeah, I think, uh, I think you've got a good thing going here. Yep, and now my new, I got two new labs that work, one for the 3D fangs and one for the uh, um, the analog or old school fangs, new school 3D printing. So we're turning around fangs in less than 20 days from the time we received the order to the time we get them in the mail. And remember everyone, the deadline for getting your fangs by Halloween is October 1st. And I cannot guarantee it after because we are gonna be bombarded with orders. And as the, the lab owner said, I'm happy to take a rush order for twice the price. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so what they did was they scanned and made molds of my personal fangs that I hand carved and they make replicas of my fangs. So if I die or get in a disappear or fly to Mars with Elon Musk, okay, I will definitely have my fangs continue to be produced forever. Oh, thank you. Because your legacy has expanded. That's the first my I'm setting up my legacy that I don't need to be there for. Yeah. <laughs> Shannon, is, is really that cool. a real true blood? That's a real, is that like authentic true blood? Well, of course it is. What else do you expect me to drink? Did, yeah, I, I know. But the thing is, is that. Yes, it is. Is that like a bottle that you saved? Yes, it is authentic from HBO. Oh, wow. She's cracking open the good stuff. Hi. Us. What an honor. I wish you were here with me. I'd crack you open one too. A little A. Aww. It's O positive. I personally like the AB negative. I think that one's a little bit uh, spicier. <laughs> <laughs> I, I miss True Blood. That was a great show. It was my favorite. I loved it. We just had uh, Kristen Bauer on the show. Pam. Oh, I loved meeting her. Oh, my God. That was like kind of a dream come true. So you guys made that happen. That was really rad. Pam was my favorite character on that show and meeting her at Bar Sinister was totally magical. She was so cute. I got, I was so nervous to go up there on the stage and meet her. And then when she was there, she was so nice and so accommodating. And she said to me, oh, it's so nice to meet another queen. And I'm like, oh, what are you talking about? Oh my God, what? <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Silly, ridiculous. And um, she was just so nice. And it was really nice to meet her. And, you know, um, she's just really cool. I liked it. So thanks. That's great. Well, speaking of you being a queen, we agree. <laughs> and we want to hear all about your vampire ball. Oh. How did that start? How did that come to be? Um, well, one day I was sitting around with my girlfriend and we were drinking a bottle of vampire wine and we all know, know and love vampire vineyards. Uh, and they've all become real good friends of all of us over the years. But way back in the day, 15 years ago, we were drinking a bottle of vampire wine and 
my friend said to me, what should we do for Halloween? And I was like, I don't know. What do you think? You know, should we throw a Halloween party? She's like, what about a vampire ball? And, you know, Twilight was hot at that point. I know how much right. Twilight, brother. Um, <laughs> but that's kind of what, what my catalyst was. My first vampire ball that I threw was the twilight ball and we threw like a, a vampire prom basically and it was in a bar and we had 120 people show up and i thought well this is fun maybe i should do it again next year so i moved to a larger location the next year and stayed there for three years then moved to a, a automobile museum where we had like 900 people and then I eventually moved into Harlow's where I'm at currently and uh, they're in Sacramento in downtown. And it's like a magic combination. They are uh, so cool to work with. It's like, you know, how you have your wonderful relationship with House of Blues and the Castle Ybor and all these okay. places. I have that with Harlow's and it's just makes for, they, they care. They they look forward to the vampire ball every year, even though they're throwing an event every single night of the year. So it's a big deal to the club. It's a big deal to our people here in the Sacrament Halo who have been coming for 15 years. And um, we do uh, uh, a smaller scale party than what you uh, have at Endless Night, but it's about um, a comfortable 500 people Sometimes we have kink zones. Sometimes we have a burlesque show. Sometimes, well, all the time we have rock and roll just because that's kind of my background. I'm a musician. Um, so we do, you know, uh, a, a rock and live show. Uh, we have um, belly dancers and fire dancers and all sorts of, you know, whatever is is fun and interesting and somebody comes to me and brings it to me i can probably find a way to incorporate them into my vampire ball and so we usually have a lot of performers even though it's a smaller event we still end up with like probably 30 or 40 people that are just heavily involved in the party and making things you know magical for our guests and i also want to bring up the fact that it's on the same night as the new orleans vampire ball and well, no, here's Have the thing. Ever. This shows, you know, one one of the reasons why we do the anti-Valentine's Day ball is because the New Orleans Vampire Ball, I have so many friends that are in the Halloween business hey, we can't that run together. a <laughs> Yeah. It's like we can have a great experience in New Orleans, but so many of my friends, like yourself, who have an event or a business to run on that night that run a haunted house or, or my friend stitch from the Gothic Renaissance shop in New York or the, um, or, you know, all these haunt people, they can't come. So we throw the LA ball, the LA ball came to existence. The Valentine's ball came into existence because of that. Cool. But Thanks. what I want to say is, is that you're a part of the LA ball just as much as you're a part of your ball. And you, you, we, we have events on the same night and we don't have any problems. No, in fact, it's, it's great. Brother and sister. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're going to be buried in my so, tomb for crying out loud. Oh, well, we got to go into that real quick. Uh -huh. So how did that come to be? Well, um, you know, and I know a very good friend of ours, an artist who makes these lovely things that you see on my vampire ball page, oh my, my own page, Ricardo Pistanio. Okay. Pistanio. Yeah. So. We should have Ricardo on the podcast. Soon. Oh, we have to have Ricardo on the podcast. It, Ricardo has some of the best stories that I've ever heard. And I thought to myself, how on earth can that be true? How on earth can that be true? And then here we are 20 years later, almost 20 years later. And I'm going, I mean, everything has been confirmed by other people, such as this tomb. He says, oh yeah, you know, I got a tomb in all these cemeteries in New Orleans. And I'm like, oh, that's super crazy. Okay, can we go maybe check him out? He's like, oh yeah, I'll take you all around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Find out that one of them is in St. Louis number one, which is 
as many people know, where uh, the voodoo queen Marie Laveau resides, and also uh, the the new Dracula, uh, Nicholas Nick Cage himself. <laughs> and so I was like, wait a minute, don't you have to be like on a tour to get inside that place? I hear it's, a, you know, it's, it's on lockdown. And so he's like, no, not with this family pass. And so he gave me a family pass. And so that was like, yeah, you have one too, look at you. And, and so he saw <laughs> my interest and my care for it and my love for the whole place in New Orleans. And he one day was sitting at my dining room table in uh, Laguna Hills. And he says to me, um, I'm going to give you all the tombs. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> I'm like, what is that? Ah! What does that even mean? I'm going to give you $2 million of worthless property. You can't sell it, but your name's on it. You get to decide who's in it. I'm like, okay, <laughs> why not? <laughs> so it's a wow. huge honor. He knows that I wouldn't exhume all of the bodies out of it and sell the dang thing. He knows that I care. He knows that I care about the city. Um, and, you know, I mean, I'm kind of a vampire. You're kind of a vampire. You're kind of a vampire. Like we should kind of be buried in that cemetery, in my opinion. So what we did, people out there, was we made our own plaques. <laughs> and they do not have death <laughs> dates because we're not dead yet. And in fact, vampires don't die. So maybe they will never have a death date. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> But well, cute. one of the things that, on the picture, one of the things it's a, the, the little oh, plaques yeah. there on the bottom, one of them says Ricardo Castanio, and the other one says Shannon. And then we just put up the Father Sebastian one. And then because you are um, super extra and everybody knows that, you had to go and change your plaque to read something a little bit more spicy. And so when we. <laughs> When we go back to New Orleans, we will chip the old one off like this. And then we will slap a new one up because, dear brother, I know you'd like to be on the vampire tours just as much as I would. So <laughs> I'm all for Well, what I did is I put my my plaque is 1875 to it. present day. And because I love chocolate, Stevie Nicks, Bruce, my husband, and um New Orleans and Mardi Gras or something. <laughs> That's all the things I love. And blood. So there was a bunch of controversy of people getting weird about us being buried there. And no, there was a lot to those of controversy people... about people getting weird about you being buried there. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, <laughs> shit. But it's basically anytime I open my mouth about this cemetery, somebody calls the Catholic Archdiocese on me to try and Meh, meh, meh. But it's like, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm just at my tomb, possibly painting it or, I don't know, maybe putting in a new flower bed, maybe straightening the urn on top. And I, yeah, maybe I have my mom crawling on top of it because she only weighs 98 pounds. And people just, they like to report us like we're doing something wrong. It's like, ah, oh, so bizarre. What Such a bizarre world. One of the things that I... I got a lot of heat from some people because I've been going to New Orleans since Halloween, since 2000, 1995. I've been there every possible physical Halloween I've been there. And we bring thousands of people to New Orleans mm -hmm. over the years to help with the businesses and we promote and support local businesses. And that's really important. And we also make sure that our friends at the Anne Rice Vampire List at Fan Club Ball, which is a lot of things, Okay, because Anne Rice didn't want a fan club for herself, so they said called it Anne Rice's Vampire Lestat Fan Club. Cool. They do a great party, and people ask the differences between Endless Night and their party, and the real simple thing is, is their party is specifically for Anne Rice and Endless Stat and the genre of the immortal universe that she has created. Okay, and Endless Night is about all the other stuff. From Dracula to, you know, we've we've built our event not being an Anne Rice event. Right. And we also stay on, a, they're traditionally on a Friday night and we're traditionally on the Saturday night. And I'm looking forward to supporting their event. And I think it's a really good party. I, it's at the Elms Mansion. It looks amazing. What's that? 
I would love to go. It looks amazing. There's physically no way I can make that happen, but it does. Look I know you have to fly there and fly back and then fly back. Yeah, that would be nuts. <laughs> but I will fly in for Halloween with you, uh, both of you, yeah. and hang out for a few days. We can spruce up the tomb, maybe give it a few succulents or something. I don't know. That makes sense. Succulents. Well, we gotta... <laughs> are we putting big dogs on the tomb? We are. We have, um, I don't know, I think they're about three feet tall and they're whippets because Ricardo used to show dogs. And so he ended up with two stone whippets, like the skinny 1980s ones. And so those will be the oh. hounds of hell. <laughs> I was just thinking, hounds of hell. Laugh every time. Can we paint their eyes red? But really, they're just because they're whippets and they're cute, and I think it's going to look really good. And where else are we going to put them, honestly? So um, let's have Rob show the tomb unpainted. There it is. Okay. This Perfect. is what it looked like since the 1950s. So let me give you a little history on this tomb. So at the top of it, you say, I think it says Pinard. That was... Uh, the person who bought it after Surpass, um, and then I believe Pinard was the one that gave it to Danio. And by giving it, I mean that family probably owed the other family money kind of thing, and things change hands like that. So that's what we believe happened there. And then Surpass, it's kind of known on the internet, like if you look up Surpass tomb, that's what you're going to see. But currently it's the Pistanio tomb, so... That's cool. And yeah. one thing I really want people to be aware of is that we're not paying to be in this tomb. We're not bribing anybody. We are actually, uh, but we've been invited by the family, Ricardo, who is the title holder, title, title holder mm -hmm. okay, to be interned here. And it's been an, in, in from, and Ricardo's family goes way back in New Orleans. They're a native family. And there's a thing that there's a difference between a local and a native. Okay, native is someone born and raised in New Orleans. And then there's someone who's a, um, a local who is someone who's migrated to New Orleans. But the thing is, is that we all love New Orleans. And it's an absolute honor to be invited to be in this tomb and share my immortality with my sister, Shannon. Mm -hmm. It's a wild and crazy ride because inside that tomb are... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they, they are a, they're an interesting group. Uh, yeah. Reminds yeah. me of the Haunted Mansion. Wild ride. I'm all for it. I think it's going to, I mean, I don't want to like move in right now, but <laughs> it's going to be fun when we do, I guess. And I'm really hoping, I'm hoping that you die first so that I can <laughs> do a really rock second line if you know i would okay i would do that like you would have the raddest second line on planet earth so just try and if you can you know i'm only joking. well shannon Please don't die i i plan on dying at 86 well this this incarnation 86. dying at 86 yeah because i had three different psychics at points in my life tell me i was going to die at 86 wow that's a long life, but whoa. <laughs> I don't I've already done a lot so far. Bad enough knowing where you're going to end up. And... Shannon? Yo. I think that's your, Johanna's going to ask you to be on the, on the uh, pirate ship. I want to um, be on the pirate ship. I can give you some serious pirate vibes, girl. I, have I some... believe it. I was, I was so <laughs> bummed that you weren't there. We missed you. Oh. I have to, I have to come, like, I have a different uh, situation lately where I'm a 24-hour caregiver these days. And so it's traveling has been mm, a little challenge. I'm going to send Rob some pictures of the... Uh, the happening, you know, eventually. So, yeah, I'm coming. One day or another, I'll yeah. be there. There's plenty of time to sail yeah. the seas. All right. I don't plan on quitting any time being a vampire anytime soon. So, oh, <laughs> so, um, that rain. I just Let's talk about your jewelry line. Oh, 
All right, so right now I'm wearing these. These are our Bowie bolts because we love David Bowie. Wow. And these are um, high grade turquoise. Uh, this one's Golden Hills. This one's, I can't remember. I, I have so many pieces of turquoise. It's hard for me to remember all their names, but Raina makes me some pretty exquisite stuff. And then what I like about it is it matches nicely with my unk. Beautiful. She makes a lot of stuff with these crystals. Yeah. They're quartz. Yeah, she does really interesting work. And so, you know, I'm, I'm feeling very bare. I, I feel like I could just really, you know, have more going on. But well, I. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, oh pirates. God. There we are. On right there. Hot damn. I love this. All right. Now I know the vibe I need to work towards. It was a fun time. It was a yeah. fun time. I think set up with, with definitely something. Are you a ring person? Are you an earring person? Are you a necklace person? Are you I like it all. I like it all. <laughs> Seriously, don't care. Like, I literally will wear any thing. She love, said. love, love. What is your jewelry line called? It's called Desert Rose Silver. And it was, cre whoops, created by my best friend Raina who resides in Las Vegas and she started creating from you know custom jewelry out of really high-end stones that she had collected for about 10 years and um, finally started learning how to put it all together and then use those crystals in her work because you can go to you know any crystal show or anything and you're not going to find it anything that exquisite that you can actually make a piece of jewelry out of. Yeah. They have to be very special, you know, like they have, you to, have be, to search for them. You know, it's really hard to seek out the kind that will actually work for something like this. So she has really taken a lot of care in stones and they are just unbelievable. And so um, I'm honored that I get to be the face of the line and kind of uh, help her design some of the pieces and we call it the practical magic uh, oh. Shannon's collection I guess <laughs> I love that those are beautiful thank you I really enjoy and then you merchandise with love what's that brother you merchandise with love your your stuff is all authentic yeah I, um we care what's nice is like if something has you know, breaks or whatever, she'll just fix it. All right, whatever. It's like, you don't really get that kind of personalized uh, situation very many places, you know? So, especially with a, a popular designer, they usually, once they're over 5,000 people following them on the internet, it's like, ah, oh, you probably never even gonna be able to talk to him, but not Raina, she's so cool. And we've been best friends since she was 14 and I was 19. And so we um, we kind of worked on this idea during COVID because we had literally nothing else to do. And I was trying to help her figure out a way to make money. Um, and then now she's supporting, you know, her whole family doing this. And it really That's awesome. wild to me. And so I'm really proud of her. But our, we're having a show in Sacramento. And there's a place here that's owned by a very good friend of mine named Shasta Smith, and it's called The Altar Room. And on June 24th, we are going to be doing um, a beautiful solstice, you know, uh, what is it, midsummer? What do we call this? What we call summer solstice. Yeah, summer solstice party. And then uh, I'm going to be showing Rainer's jewelry and selling it there. And what's crazy is like people show up and then I show everything and then it's gone. <laughs> like it doesn't even last 30 minutes. <laughs> I, love I it. believe it. So the altar room I've seen pictures of and it looks oh, so amazing. Oh my God. We have to do a convivium there for maybe um, some of our Bay Area uh, Sabertooths and Sacramento oh. Sabertooths. I heard I might be coming up to that event. What's that? I might be coming up to that event. I got some air miles that I got to use on Southwest. Ah, you know, there's other things that you can do while you're here too. Believe you me, my brother. Yeah. I will have you very busy. You'll be working. Wait, let me just calm down here. 
Wait, so calm down. My whip. Can you grab me the whip? <laughs> so I have an announcement that I'm going to make live here. I'm adopting a dog. Yay! And Johanna gets to bring him from Florida to visit. Yay. Yep. And his name is Sir Bradley. Oh, and Sir he's Bradley. a Westie Terrier. Oh, is that Sir Bradley? He was born in Serbia. Are they the little white guys, the little West Highland white terrier guys? Yes. Eee! And he's four years old and he's going to be my service dog. So I'm very oh. excited. Congratulations. And yeah, thank you. Aww. So I met a really cool person in Germany and she told me about her service dog and she's a white German shepherd and how amazing it changed her life and how little stress she has and how happy she so I was like, that's wonderful. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited. She said she can help me train him. So I'm really excited for that. Oh, how great. Well, that's going to be, I'll tell you the same. world traveling terrier. <laughs> well, he's, he got a passport. He was born in, in Serbia. That's so cute. Oh, oh my gosh. Perfect. Yeah. I'll, when I get a picture of him of that, after he's taken a bath, because my mother, my mother has him right now. And he is just such a lovely guy. He's so nice and kind and and not crazy like most Westie Terriers, nuclear reactors. <laughs> I lived with eight of them. They are nuts. But uh, that is only if they're not properly trained. So, you know. Well, Bradley is going to be my best friend, so. That's going to be so rad. Super happy for you. Yeah, I'm excited. That's really, I'm, I'm really excited. a joyous occasion. You're going to be covered in white doggy fur. I love that. <laughs> they don't <Right>. shed. <laughs> no? No? No, they don't shed at all. Oh, because they have hair. Well, that's great. Yes. Good. I had a poodle. He's hyperallergenic. So I'm going to bring him everywhere. I'm going to, he's, he's about this big. Oh. That's going to be wonderful. <laughs> it's about this big. Cool. And he's Dr. John Connery. Oh. So his name is Sher Bradley. Sir Bradley. I love it. Sir Bradley. That's cute. I could imagine, like, someday we're going to have AI that's going to give dogs voices. <laughs> I can't wait. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love, cool. I love dogs so much more than humans. And humans taste delicious, but I just love dogs. Mm. So we have a black veil that we read every every episode of this. Black Veils, Master Vampire Edition 888, hardcover. Me and too. I'm reading this because Shannon, you're my sister. And I want to read to you the Black Veil of Family. What, most surprising, what is most surprising to many that are not vampires is that vampires highly value the veil of, of family. Vampires being tribal, passionate, loving courtiers naturally have a sense of family culture. The black veil family has always been a strong element in the center of vampire culture. For example, interactions between individuals who had fangs made or an agreement with the black veils have a certain type of kinship that is unknown outside the, such a, uh, outside the community. Family is something many of us seek. In the 1990s, Long Black Veil, vale, it was immensely popular to celebrate Mother's Day, where the vampires would, be, would bring their uh, birth mothers and we would honor them with one big party. Yes, free champagne for moms on, on Mother's Day. Those from outside the community will see us, uh, see us as goths and rebels in rejecting our birth families. This could not be further from the truth. The family veil encourages a strong, loving bond with all members of one's birth family. Yet it seems that most vampires are very individualistic and they often are loners, and many have uh, decent yet distant relations with their mundane family and use the clan as a surrogate nightside family. Since the founding of the Sabretooth clan on August 7th, 1995, the concept of family has been one of the major black veils. So, Shannon, Johanna, we are a nightside family. Indeed. So that is uh 
rock and roll power. I, I keep saying rock and roll because I, I love the rock. There should be a rock and roll black veil. There should. Oh, sounds like a new book in the works. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, the lost veils. <laughs> the ones that have not the yet. <laughs> but every time I read a black veil, every time I read a black veil, it's like I, I think of new things I can add to it. It's awesome. So great. So what else do we have to talk about, Johanna? Hmm. I would like to hear about Shannon McCabe, the musician. Ah, yes. So I sing. I've been a singer for a long time. And uh, my husband and I both play piano and we both play guitar. Although he's been a musician for 45 plus years. I just started when I was <clears throat> roughly 42. And um, so about six years I've been a musician. And um, it's really helped with being able to sing, uh, as you know, Johanna, um, it has to be your living, breathing, waking every moment in order to become masterful like you. I, on the other hand, am plucking away, having a good time playing chords. And so, uh, I don't know, I just really enjoy it. And I like making music with Bruce because, um, you know, we sing well together. We He's, uh, he's been a super great helper. Um, he taught me a ton of stuff, taught me how to record, how to edit, um, you know, all the things. So it's been an interesting ride. And, uh, and we have a YouTube channel and it's called Shannon and Bruce. And we <laughs> take uh, songs from movies that we like. Like, um, have you guys ever seen the movie, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Yeah. Okay. So. Um, we do the title song from that movie. Uh, we do um, some bluegrass, believe it or not. Uh, I am not the biggest goth in the world. Everybody knows that. I mean, this vampire gets a spray tan just to hold on to her humanity. So my music, <laughs> my music is definitely not vampire-y, um, but it's, you know, what comes out. And so... It's a, uh, it's a blast. We're thinking about uh, laying down a song or two while I'm here in town. And this one being from a movie that we love called uh, A Mighty Wind. And it's Eugene Levy and Catherine O'Hara, the actors. And they sing this crazy song and Bruce and I do it. And it's like literally one of the hardest songs we've ever worked on. Their harmonies are insane. Uh, it's something that we've just worked on for years and years and years and have tried to like get it right. And we're finally going to lay it down, I think, this week. So, <laughs> oh, we shall see. Yeah, it's fun. It's, yeah, uh, that, that's really the, the purpose of it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't take it very seriously. I don't take anything very seriously. I'm a vampire. Why would I do that? So, there you go. <laughs> love doing it and I won't stop and I know that I'll be a musician until the day that I end up in that tomb in St. Louis number one. And then people will come and worship you like they should <laughs> and <laughs> your music outside your oh, grave and smoke the point. No, no, no. No one has to do that. But what they could do is leave a bottle of champagne perhaps and maybe a Hershey's kiss because that is what I would need in death guaranteed. <laughs> Shannon, Shannon, you're awesome. Thank you for coming on our podcast. Thank you for having. It's uh, you guys. I love when people get to know the people behind the parties. You're my vampire people. I love you guys. Oh, that's awesome. Love you too, Shannon. I want you to rock and roll. And where can we find you? Um, I'm in Sacramento right now, but I'm hoping that nobody knows my address. <laughs> well, on the you, you need to know shannonmcnee.com. <laughs> So I'm on Instagram. I'm under like Shannon underscore McCabe, I think. And I'm on TikTok as Shannon McCabe. And I'm on Facebook as Shannon underscore McCabe something, something, something. Anyway, it's my face and my head. You'll see it. Awesome. <laughs> Shannon McCabe somewhere. I'm going to pop up. And um, 
I will be announcing my theme for my vampire ball this, uh, hopefully this coming up week. I have a couple things I'm toying with um, that I actually want to discuss with y'all later. And uh, then we'll make that announcement and party time. Here we go. Halloween. Awesome. We can do it right <laughs> after the podcast. Midsummer Scream. Are you guys going to be at that? And, and uh, What is that? Midsummer Scream in Anaheim. Are anybody going to be at this? Probably. I'm thinking about trying to make it. So I think that could be very fun and interesting. Yeah. Let's set up an endless night table. Text also. me about it. I don't tell me about it later. I think it's a big con- I think it's the same weekend as Babylon. <sighs> which will be great because we can do both. Hey, I'm down for whatever. You know, I'm a warrior when I'm down there in Hollywood. <laughs> when I'm in Sacramento right. I'm at by 830, but you know, it's a very comfortable coffin. What can I say? Yes, and your house is very lovely and all the gnomes in the garden and the dragons and, <laughs> and the squirrels that eat it are here, fucking awesome. Here it's much more gothic. <laughs> <laughs> all right we gotta go we gotta um running out of time thank you shannon thank you johanna thank you both rock and roll guys